So you want to get into the wedding video industry, but don't know where to start or how to get your first few clients. I filmed around 30 weddings over the years. And in 2022, I was a part of about 12 wedding productions. I'm extremely confident with filming weddings. So I thought I'd make a video explaining how to break into the wedding video industry. So I'm sure you've heard time and time again, whether it be on YouTube videos, social media content, podcasts of people saying that there's a lot of money in the wedding video industry. Now I will say that there is, but it's a lot of work and we're gonna get into that a little later on in this video. Starting things off with the basics, how to get your first wedding video client. The first thing that I would do if I was starting all over again is go to Facebook and type in wedding groups in your area. In my area, there's a group called Regina Wedding Network with a thousand people in it, Regina Wedding and Bridal Resources with 1600 people in it, as well as a Regina wedding buy, sell and discuss group with 11,000 people in it. This is a great place to make a Facebook post in and specifically call out any couples that have weddings around the corner who want a free wedding video shot by a solo filmmaker who don't have a budget for their wedding video for the special day. Posting a call out for a couple who doesn't have the budget for a videographer to begin with will be more inclined to not only give you a shot at your first wedding video, but also won't be stressed if the video doesn't come out perfect. If you are not a professional in a certain niche or area of videography, then I hate to break it to you, but it's not fair to the client to be paying you top dollar for your time. Chances are, if you're a beginner, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes during your first wedding shoot and edit. However, getting the hands-on experience during the first, second, or third free shoot will only set you up for success when you start charging real money. And trust me, the real money does come in very quickly when it comes to wedding videography. So equipment to consider to make your wedding videos run smoothly is obviously your main camera that will be in your hand for the entirety of the shoot day. But I will say what will make your life a heck of a lot easier is a second camera body with a zoom lens. This is something that you could maybe rent out or borrow from a friend but preferably something along the lines of a 70 to 200 millimeter focal length that will sit on a tripod and record the couple at the front of the ceremony, as well as the podium during the reception speeches. Keep in mind that being able to deliver the raw ceremony footage and speeches to your clients can either be a free upsell to get the client to book you, or you can upsell it at an extra cost. Even if it does cost an extra three, $400, couples will say, yeah, sure, why not? And we'll pay you extra for the footage. Another piece of equipment that definitely takes your wedding videos to the next level is an external recorder with the appropriate audio cable. So I actually use a Zoom H4n recorder and I plug it in through a little XLR cable here. I'm actually using it right now with a microphone that's boomed over top of me to record this video. But what I'll do at weddings is actually plug this external recorder into the back of like a big speaker Speaker that's being used during the ceremony or the reception, or I plug it directly into a soundboard. This gives me clear audio to pull from to lay over in my edit. And this is generally what a lot of couples do want when you're hired out to film their special day. I promise to love your yaya yeah every single day. So we feel truly blessed to have the most important people in our lives here tonight as we celebrate our new life together as husband and wife. Now, when I film weddings, I personally love my Canon 35 millimeter F1.4 because it's sharp and it's not too wide and not too zoomed in. If I really wanted to, I could get away with filming an entire wedding video with this focal length. But if I were to choose, I think I would go with something like a 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens or something equivalent, just because you can get those punched in shots of emotional reaction. This also helps you grab shots of the couple during the ceremony and much more. Keep in mind as well that as a videographer, you want to keep a mental note in the back of your mind while you're filming that you want to be as unseen as humanly possible. You're literally a fly on the wall and out of everybody's way. The last thing you want is to be annoying people by sticking like a wide angle 16 millimeter lens in their faces for 10 seconds straight and making people feel awkward. Now I know I'll get this question in the comments, so I'm going to address it, but is a gimbal necessary for wedding videos? I would say yes and no. For the shots you're capturing of the couple after the ceremony is finished, definitely capture everything off of a gimbal, but you can pull this off handheld. I just feel that like even the shots where the couple is now married and walking down the aisle together, these are always best captured with a smooth shot with a gimbal and not a super shaky handheld shot. 
When I was a beginner, my first five weddings, I literally filmed every single shot with my gimbal and I got almost zero shots handheld. Now, when I film wedding videos, I would say about 70% of the video is shot handheld and 30% of the shots I use a gimbal. Now, this isn't so much a gear question, but it's still something I wanna address because I've been to weddings before where there were amateur videographers filming. And I gotta say, it looks far more professional if you actually dress up as if you were actually attending the wedding. The person I saw the one time was wearing wearing baggy jeans, a Supreme t-shirt, and dirty runners. This really isn't a good look, and you have to keep in mind that first impressions and how you compose yourself at a wedding shoot can lead to more wedding bookings down the road due to word of mouth from you filming the specific wedding you're shooting for. Now, I would say that what I'm about to tell you is like the most important part of actually the pre-production of your wedding shoots, and it's asking the couples these specific questions prior to hopping on set, and I'm talking like months in advance, try to get this information from the couples. Ask for the wedding day itinerary for the wedding party. So this is like the itinerary that they would actually give everybody that's a part of the wedding party or involved behind the scenes, just so you know what is exactly happening when. Obviously, triple confirm the date of the wedding so you don't double book. Confirm the location of where the girls will be getting ready in the morning, where the guys will be getting ready in the morning, the location of the ceremony, the location of the reception, the location of where the first look will take place or if there will be a first look with the bride and the groom, the location of where they plan to have photos taken after the ceremony. Ask who you can contact to see if there is a photo of the audio board or if you can plug in an external recorder to capture audio. Couples will usually give you the contact of the venue manager. Ask if the couple has written letters to each other to read prior to the ceremony while they're getting ready and if the couples want these letters read on camera to use in the video. The time of the reception speeches, time of the first dance, and the time of the cake cutting. Getting clear answers to these questions will ensure that you're ultimately at the right place at the right time and don't miss a moment throughout the day. All right, so budget. So how much should you be charging for wedding videos and how much did I charge for wedding videos? First and foremost, again, I highly suggest filming your first like one, two, or even three wedding videos completely for free. I know it's a lot of work, but it's gonna pay off in the end. After that, I guarantee that you'll start to get some inquiries rolling through the door from word of mouth. Once people come to you, this is when you start charging around the $300 mark, then 600, 1,000, 1,500, all the way up to like 3,500, so on and so forth. I feel like once you hit the $2,500 to $3,000 mark, this is when you've become a more highly skilled industry professional in this niche. And guys, you gotta make sure that you're getting 50% deposits for whatever budgets you charge couples. Reason being is you then secure the date of the wedding in your schedule, plus you then have some upfront cash flow coming through the door. Now, I will say that once you start hitting the $2,000 to $2,500 budget, and maybe you're filming two to three weddings per month, I highly suggest you start to set aside your budgets, whether it's $300 to $500, to hire a second videographer to help capture these weddings. In my opinion, the most important times of the day to have a second shooter would be to take on the filming of the couples with the wedding party getting ready in the morning, so you two would split off and there's no need to run back and forth with your head cut off to capture these shots. As well as during the ceremony and the reception, it's just good to have a second camera angle. Now, one of the hardest shots, in my opinion, to capture at the ceremonies and why a second shooter just definitely comes in handy for these situations is when the groom is already at the front of the ceremony he's walked down the aisle he's standing at the front and everybody's waiting for the bride to arrive at the top of the aisle and everybody's standing and looking a really really good shot to capture shots that every single couple has absolutely loved and i didn't do until maybe my 10th video because I didn't start having a crew on set until like my 10th or 11th wedding video, is one of the shooters literally just has a locked off camera angle shot on the groom's face. For some grooms, not all, some people will just be straight face and that's totally okay, but some grooms will literally start breaking down into tears and this is probably the shot of the video. It's such a heartwarming shot that you just don't wanna miss it. And as a solo shooter, yes, you can capture it by literally just locking off the shot on the groom Maybe he starts to get emotional, but then you have to immediately whip the camera backwards to shoot the bride coming down the aisle because you obviously don't wanna miss that shot too. Having a second shooter just makes these little shots so much easier to capture and so much less stressful. 
Now, I always like having a second shooter for the morning shots of the bride and groom or the wedding parties just getting ready together up until the point of the first dances. So once the first dances are finished and it goes into like the more party stage of the wedding video or the wedding day, then you can just tell the videographer, you know, you don't have to stick around for an extra two hours or so. For me personally, when, when we get to like the dancing part of the videos, that's when everything is like smooth sailing and it's like, all right, now we can like kind of relax and just do our thing. Now for myself, the last five wedding shoots I shot were around the $3,000 to $3,500 budget. And you need to keep in mind as well that if you film 20 wedding videos at $3,000 each, that's a solid $60,000 in a year. If it takes you three full 12 hour days to edit each video, that's approximately 80 days out of the year for filming and editing your 20 wedding videos, which leaves you around eight to nine months out of the year to take on video projects outside of the scope of weddings. Just to put that into perspective for you guys and why a lot of experienced videographers say that yes, weddings are a lot of work, but there is a lot of money in the industry of wedding videography. Now, do I film weddings today? I actually have recently retired filming wedding videos for a couple of reasons. The biggest reason being the budget. Spending upwards of 12 hours in a day filming, sometimes having to drive an hour to and from the location of the wedding, plus add on a solid 20 to 30 hours of editing time, I just feel there's better ways for me to spend my time even if those wedding videos were paying me good money. Not to mention, filming weddings is generally a higher stress shoot because you typically can't recapture a missed moment. I also felt like I broke into the wedding industry so rapidly that after I'd shot over 20 of them, I just felt like it wasn't a niche of video that excites me to shoot, but at least I tried it out. Secondly, budget just wasn't there for where I live. I live in a smaller city, so it was really hard to be paid more than $3,500 for a wedding video, which might sound like a lot to you guys, but it really isn't for a professional wedding video from an experienced shooter and editor. Now I've done some research in the bigger cities to see what other people are charging and there are people at the equivalent quality as I am for weddings and their rates start at around $8,000 and go all the way up to $12,000 for a single wedding video ranging from five minutes to 10 minutes in length. So for me where I live, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense as the profit margins aren't the best. And before you go, comment down below if you want me to create separate videos videos diving deeper into how to capture specific parts of the day as I feel this video definitely scratched the surface but still gave a lot of insight regardless. Thanks everybody for watching, catch you in the next video, peace.